This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.com. Um, 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 um. What are the characteristics that mark good activism, efficient activism, liberty activism that doesn't wind up being like this? I'd say there are roughly 10 characteristics that mark efficient activism. Ow. Ow. You wouldn't hit on all 10 cylinders every time, but the more of them that you can hit, the better. Two, three, uh. In no particular order, ideal activism for liberty features good demeanor, sustainability, appropriate location, i.e. New Hampshire, and to paraphrase the German rebel von Stauffenberg, a reasonable chance of success. It inspires follow-up activity, or is itself follow-up activity. It recruits movers to New Hampshire. It gets attention. It generates more popular support than opposition. It creates change. It, isolated or it isolates or divides our enemies. Generates revenue. It flushes authoritarians out into the open. Or as Gandhi used to say, it makes an injustice visible. It directly makes life better for someone. It actually is pro-liberty. Makes us look good. Costs little time or money in proportion to the benefit. Probably it would be safe to say that if a piece of activism hits on half of these cylinders and doesn't hurt anybody, it's probably good activism. I'd like to go into more detail and kind of show some examples. Let's start from the bottom, from the very least efficient, most wasteful activism, which of course is still better than no activism, and then we'll work our way up to what I think is some of the most efficient and impressive activism I've ever seen in the liberty community. This is what the least effective, peaceable activism looks like. It looks like this because you didn't get any video of it. Or, I guess I should say, whoever was doing it didn't get any video of it. Or, maybe I should say, it looks like this because it never happened. The second worst freedom activism looks a little more like this. There is some sort of visual record, but it's a visual record of someone no one recognizes standing behind a podium and talking. Or it's a picture of what mainstream photographers call Bopsa. Bunch of people sitting around. Again, lots better than nothing. This might sadly be the form that most activism takes around the country. People meeting outside New Hampshire, talking and listening. To be really weak activism, it, it pretty much does need to be outside New Hampshire. Then there's this, not sure if it's worse or better, Running a National Libertarian Party candidacy, not even in New Hampshire. Jumping right into that black hole that the federal government has set aside for you. Doing the type of work that the U.S. system is designed to absorb and dissipate. After that, maybe you graduated to doing something similar except on a local level expending half the effort to get the same zero result. A step above that would be doing something that's actually quick and easy and visual in an attempt to free some place that's not New Hampshire. At least you didn't have to put weeks of effort into it. If you stood in the right spot for an hour, you probably got seen by a couple thousand people and one in 10 chance you made it into a local paper to be forgotten later. A step above that would be doing the same sort of thing after signing the letter of intent that you'll move to New Hampshire. Whoops, wrong shot. There we go. How you doing? Doing fine. What's DHS? Department of Homeland Security. He's trying to save California before leaving it for some reason. The fact that they're free staters at least makes it easier for free staters to talk about them. 
it may not physically bring them under our umbrella that they're free staters, but it, it uh, makes it easier for them to garner support from free staters of uh, whatever type that might be. Then there's out and out textbook civil disobedience outside New Hampshire. Well, actually in this case it wasn't textbook. This is a free stater, Lauren Canario, getting arrested in Connecticut for sitting on a porch that was about to be imminent domained. Don't think it was really planned. It has to be textbook civil disobedience. It has to be planned. But this one hit on almost all the cylinders except for location. It got a lot of media attention. It mobilized a lot of follow-on activism. Popular support for her was high. But ultimately, I got the impression that uh, I got the impression that she had ultimately second thoughts about the location. She moved to New Hampshire not long after this. But so far hasn't done anything here that was uh, as popular as this one. Maybe it's hard to be David without Goliath. Rich Paul, Lauren, and Richard. But at least the constructive troubles she got into here happened within easy range of our support infrastructure. Blockchain.info's free Bitcoin web wallet, chock full of privacy and security features, two-factor authentication, a second password for sending coins, they never have control over your passwords or your coins. They don't even require your personal info. Get yours today at blockchain.com. Um, 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 um.